I've left this charging all day. Let's see. Wow, it's still taking power. Gosh. This battery is so thirsty. It just keeps taking power. It was at about 50% charge before. And I've put another quarter of a kilowatt hour into there today. That's amazing. I just came out and checked and it is at 13.58 volts. I would consider that fully charged. Let's get this Redoto power battery back home and start pulling power from it and see how much we get. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to disconnect this because this would have read its own current that it took. And that would put our, yep, it would put our number off by 14 amp hours. So best to undo this before we begin. And there we've reset it. Now we can begin. Okay, we have it connected up to the inverter. The inverter is connected up to the electronics. We have the TV, we have my computer, and let's see how we do. Now, I'm not going to try to increase the efficiency too much this time. This is just testing the battery. And now, even though my computer uses a bit too much power just to watch videos or play games, I can always upgrade that in the future. And if this really does give two and a half kilowatt hours, then I could possibly have several days worth of entertainment out of this if I optimize my setup. So guys, so we've been using this for six hours, four of those hours being for watching TV well, YouTube, and that was using about 120 watts with everything on inefficiently. And for the past two hours, I've been playing Final Fantasy 14, which has been using about 200 watts. Let's say 180 sometimes. And 46 amp hours. Now that voltage, there's only a 40 millivolt difference upon all of that. Lithium iron phosphate just sags a bit under load. And so when I turn this off, I'm probably gonna be able to see this. Pop up a bit. Oh, there we go, 13.24 volts. So that's not too bad. Let's consult the manual. Still about 70% charge left. Well, that tracks pretty well. So guys, it's the next day. I didn't end up even turning on my computer or anything in the morning because I had to sleep in. And I've worked a full day, I've returned home, and it's time to have some power. Let's see what the power is at. It says 13.28 volts. But let's check. Thirteen point three three. 
So it looks like we're about 70% charge. Or maybe it's 80%. I can't recall. But time to get going. Forty-eight amp hours. I would say that this bodes well. I hope that we can get more power out of this. And I hope that this voltage on this detector being a little bit lower isn't going to sway things too much. We've had four and a half hours of eating dinner, watching shows, and playing video games. We're up to 97 amp hours. It's the next day, and let's check the voltage. 13.16 volts. And that is 13.16 volts. Well, maybe, maybe we're still 50% charge. Let's turn it back on. I return home after work and earlier in the day we used the battery to, well I used it on the computer for a few hours to make documents and Thais actually edited a video on it. We're now down to 12.78 volts. We've had a bit of a, an incident. The amp hours is corrupted because it doesn't seem to, look at that, it doesn't display correctly on the screen. It should be something like well, 253 maybe, or 153. But we have 2,033 watt hours. At least that one's measuring fine. But yeah, they, they made a glitch with when it's addressing to that screen. It's not addressing correctly. I think we might still have a few hundred watt hours left in it. And next time, later in this video, I think I should let this really finish charging. And then we can get a full test. But this was just a test of what happens if you charge to 13.56 volts. So we just had this running, the television, speakers, and light. It's at 12.49 volts. It's A3 amp hours, okay. But 2296 watt hours. I think even though we only charged it to 13.56 volts, it might still get very close to this number. So close already that the discrepancy in how that represents the voltage a little bit lower than what it actually is is actually enough to explain that. So even charging to 13.56 volts, we're pretty much at the point where the error in that cheap meter is bigger than the discrepancy in it. So let's keep going until we hit 11 volts. Well, it just went dark. What is the voltage? I bet the BMS may have popped off. Yeah, the BMS disconnected. Well, I did happen to check it right before it turned off. That's unfortunate that it went down that low. But it did give us about 24, 20 watt hours. So I did get that number. Sadly, my meter doesn't work for amp hours. I'm glad I didn't have my computer connected to it because here I thought it would be like the other batteries. Now, there is there is one thing that it could be. It could be that I, I didn't let it overcharge, mm -hmm. so I didn't let it balance the batteries. 
So they may have come from the factory unbalanced. I think what we should do is we should charge it up and we should let it sit. Now that's gonna be hard because this is a big battery and I don't have a permanent solar panel system yet. But this will be easy to, to charge back up. And I'll let it balance. I'll let it balance itself. We'll see if maybe later on it'll allow the voltage to go down lower. I may have accidentally turned off the beeper on this, but I don't think I did. It's interesting. So this beeps around 11.9 volts, if I remember right. And you didn't hear a beeping, did you? No. No, I just heard the... It just... Just the pop from the speakers. Yep. So, it's a shame we lost the data, but that's okay. We got most of the data. And even though I didn't fully charge it, it did give a good capacity. I think after this, I now will recommend fully charging them and letting them sit for the first time. Because there's a chance they might not come fully balanced from the factory which is user error, that's just my issue. But we still got a bunch of power from it. We didn't charge it all the way and we got, oh, what's that, like 95%, 98% of the rated capacity? Yeah. That kind of makes me feel, you know, this was still taking 16 amps without going to uh, 14 volts. So I feel like this probably could have more capacity than it's, than it's rated at, which is normal for batteries. And so now we can actually, I, I can, I can fix the roof on that building and I can put the panels up and we can get this thing sitting inside with permanent panels. So we have it fully charged up and we've let it sit for an entire day to balance charge. Now let's take this back and see what it does. We're up to 13.67 volts, 65 volts, something like that. But we won't know until we get home. Actually, no, we will know. Thirteen point six three volts. Okay, that would it be. I'm gonna want to see if I can calibrate this. And also, this should still have the same number data from the first test. Yeah. So I'm just going to disconnect one lead so that we can have it as a reset meter. Zero amp hours, that's what I like to see. Maybe next time, this time, I'll stop it before it takes 100 amp hours and I'll write down the data and restart it so we don't have that overrun issue. Well, let's see about taking this home. Since me and Thais are going on a road trip, I have decided I want to deplete this battery pretty quick. So I've been rendering and editing videos while using battery power. And at the end of each day, I'm going to disconnect it and write down the numbers. That way we don't overflow the uh, screen. We've probably taken about, yeah, it's, it's a little under half, like um, two fifths. So guys, we've started the third day and I've done the math and we've used 91.8 amp hours, 1100 watt hours.
13.12 volts. Let's check the actual voltage. 13.17 volts. Okay. Looks like 13.17 volts might be something around the 50% mark. So I have it just running on the TV, light, and sound system, watching the pilot debrief. And the voltage is going down 16.7 amp hours, 211 watt hours, 12.27 volts. Let's see if balancing this has helped at all. Because the, the quality drop, I think, is significant with this movie. But I think I, think I have a new theory now. I think he's just tired. He couldn't just film two people fighting each other? For that, let's move the Mercury Hammer. Sorry, I've just... Now, for the Mercury Hammer, I've got to now... We'll go back to the compound. This won't... Hopefully, the hammer's been made by now. Of course, it's been bubbling away brilliantly there. And let's have a quick look. Um, I'm just putting on my glove. These, of course, are gloves for cryogenic liquids. They're specially made. They've got this frost mark. They've got a snowflake symbol because they, of course, are designed for withstanding very low temperatures. So if I now unscrew this, you see, take my stand away here, and I can lift this. I can now remove my clamp, you see. I can remove my clamp. By God, it's cold. But I can't feel it. And now, you see, I'm going to use a special device called a sliding hammer. Because I've got to take my mold in two half, and then we whack it one up like this. And when we whack it one, you see the mold has come off, and we have solid mercury. This video, the Joe Strand's drop of 1939, the most horrific tale. And we know a lot about those tribes, not least from Roman historical accounts, but also artifacts found here within those areas. It's at 10.59 volts now. Nice. I'm just curious if me balancing it has actually fixed the um, early shut off issue, or will my inverter beep? Did you find out? It didn't. Okay, it just shut off. So that's unfortunate because let's see. Oh, I mean, I'll I'll pause the video because the video is still going. But um, so I believe um. It's supposed to cut off at low voltage disconnect, 10.8 volts. Okay. Hmm. But it says other numbers like 9.5 volts. So I guess I'll just need to adjust any low voltage alarms. But yeah, let's do the numbers. All right, so the numbers are in. We have 206 amp hours and 2,488.8 watt hours from this. And those are well within the error rate for this cheap power meter. But it's good to see that it's at least given us 200 amp hours. I'm quite happy with that. It's now been an entire month since the last video clip. And... Whenever me and Thais went on a road trip, I turned off the solar panels, I came home, and I had just discharged the Redoto power battery, and I took it to the, to the workshop, well, to the solar panel test station, plugged it in, charged it up. I planned to film, but I decided just to do a discharge without filming, and the results were exactly the same. I got about two and a half kilowatt hours of power out of it, and I'm pretty happy with that. I then took it back. It's been charging for like four days now along with the other one and yeah these batteries are full so this is the fourth or no fifth discharge i think fifth one yeah fifth discharge let's take this home and use it in celebration we got 14.05 volts yep that is definitely fully charged well guys the pollen is just so bad outside that when I got home and lay down to take a nap, I just realized, you know, I have to close the windows and turn on the air conditioning because it's hot. But also, there's just so much tree pollen. And now that I have the battery home, I thought, you know, I didn't do it before I took a nap, but oh well.
I was too tired then. Thirteen point nine one volts. on. We have this cooling the entire apartment. We have these computer fans taking about 12 watts. This is pushing, oh wait, no. No, this is pushing hot air this way and this is pushing the cold air that way. So it goes into the apartment through this L shape and I always turn on the Air conditioner, let's go to 77. You don't need to be wasting power. Then go to cool and go to quiet. And maybe even do the dimmer. So this has an inverter in it, DC inverter technology. So it ramps up, ramps up slowly and you can run it on almost anything. Starts going. It's building the pressure. Now, as it ramps down, it uses a lot less energy. can run for a good number of hours on that. I believe averaging out that uses about 300 watts to cool our apartment and we've rarely had to go to medium but but yeah that uses about 300 watts it goes down to 100 it goes up to 400 and the average is about 300. Right now it's like 180. And this has a SEER rating of 15, if that tells you anything. But this can run for quite a long time off of this battery. Possibly an entire evening. It's been a few minutes. And now it's only pulling 220 and about 200 watts. So we might get 10 hours out of this. Well, this is Friday. And we have plenty of time to edit this video before Sunday, for Solo Sunday. I say, let's run this down by running the air conditioner and see how much time we get. So it's been two, out, two and two thirds hours. And on average, this is pulling 176 watts. If you were to average out the time, the times that it's not pulling hardly any power and the times that it's actually running the compress compressor. And so that actually means this will last for quite a long time. This pulling the 200 or 300 watts like this, it does heat up the inverter just enough to where the fan turns on. So, I don't think we'll be using this at night, but I do want to modify this inverter to have a fan running slowly, pushing air through, and so it'll gradually always have airflow instead of just on off, because it only turns on once every 20 minutes, so even a little bit of airflow would get around that pretty well. But yeah, this is working exceptionally well, and now we're to the point of the day where the sun has gone down and the outside temperature is receding. And we, we are in a really thick masonry building. So there's still probably going to be heat coming in, but after a while, it might not take as much power 
deeper into the night to keep the air circulating. And plus, we only have it going down to 78 degrees. So that definitely saves power. Well, guys, it's been exactly seven hours and I did the math and it's it's used about 80 amp hours. It's used about one kilowatt hour. And if you plug that number in, you get about 145 watt hours per hour of use, which is really good, really, really good. And that of course is tapering down as it's getting into the night. And we also don't have it going down very low because, you know, we don't need it freezing in here, but you know, this could actually, this battery might last enough for a day worth, you know, like almost. The biggest issue is just during the hot part of the day. And that is really cool. I don't think we're going to let it go overnight because the inverter is noisy whenever it kicks on the fan. But still, we saved an entire kilowatt hour, however many pounds of or cubic feet of CO2 that is. And I'm really happy with that. I'm going to turn that off for now. And I'm going to switch over to grid power. But then tomorrow, we can run it again during the hot part of the day. Because the pollen is just way too much. There's just way too much pollen. And it's messing with me. It's messing with ice. And it's best to let the, the trees in the area do their thing. And plus, it's a bit warm right now. And... And we can maybe open the windows later on, but that honestly might be it for summer. Well, guys, I've actually decided you know, I, uh, I I went out to the farmer's market. I brought out a bunch of stuff, free stuff, and uh, people were looking at it and stuff. I made some nice connections. I forgot to hook the air conditioner onto this today, and it's Saturday evening. I'm just going to call it there, and then we can do a whole video of running an air conditioner off of 200 amp hours or 2,560 watt hours. And um, But yeah, this is doing really well. I'm really curious to see how the air conditioning technology continues to improve in the future. It's a shame a lot of companies don't have this DC inverter 15 SEER rating air conditioners that much, but oh well. I'm going to call it there, and I hope you have a happy Solar Sunday. See ya.